Good day class. Um, since we didn't um, discuss this last uh, Friday because of um, the signal is not good and the weather is not good also. So um, I plan to discuss this one. I want to record this one. Uh, if you want to um, review this um, lesson, you can uh, watch it. Okay, so um, again, our um, subject is Mathematics in the Modern World with a subject code GSC4. Okay, so here's the course description. Uh, this course deals with the nature of mathematics, appreciation of its practical, intellectual, and aesthetic dimension, and application of mathematical tools in daily life. Okay, so first semester, 2021 to 2022, I'm Alan Martin Arbreheldo, your mathematics part-time instructor. My Facebook is Alan Martin Arbreheldo, and my Gmail is salanmartin at gmail.com. My contact number is 0946409070, that is talk and text, Palompon Institute of Technology, Tabango Campus, Tabango Leyte, Office of Instruction, general teacher education department <clears throat> okay so here's the intended learning outcomes for this um, session for this discussion so at the end of the session the students will be able to first enumerate polia stages on problem solving second differentiate inductive and deductive reasoning and third analyze problems using different types of reasoning Again, so at the end of the discussion or session, the students will be able to enumerate Puglia stages on problem solving, differentiate inductive and deductive reasoning, and analyze problems using different types of reasoning. So here's your activity number four. So first is create your own four steps of answering a mathematical problem. So it depends on you on what are those things four steps that you want to use in solving different word problems in math. Second, compare and contrast inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning using Venn diagram. So using this Venn diagram, you should um, compare and contrast inductive and deductive reasoning. So here, in the middle of the Venn diagram, that is the similarities. Or they contrast. And then the comparison or the difference of inductive and deductive reasoning, you put you will put here. This one and this one. Okay, so lesson 5, Puglia's Problem Solving Strategy. So, um, who is um, Puglia? So, George Puglia was a Hungarian mathematician. So, he was a Hungarian mathematician. He was a professor of mathematics. He invented the basic principles of problems. So, George Puglia invented the basic principles of problems or his own four steps of pro solving a problem. Okay, so that's why I want you to create your own um, four steps because um, George Polia created his own um, basic principles of problems. So I know that each one of us has its own strategies or steps to solve a mathematics problem. But then it depends on you, on what you are going to use, what solution you are going to use. But however, mathematics has its own, um, only one answer. So that's why we need to get the answer, whatever solutions that we have. And I encourage everyone to give a um, solution, not to answer directly, especially in math. Because uh, through solution, teachers will um, say that you really do your effort as a student. Because if you don't so show your solution, there are a tendency... The teachers will um will um no dili sila kay balo dili sila kay balo di unsa so is it magic so that's why um teachers encourage to give solution mathematics teachers encourage everyone to give your own solution as because that is a way that you really do your thing you really um give effort for a problem. Okay, so George Puglia identifies the following basic principles of problem in his book. So, he has its own um, principles. 
um, four ba basic principles of problem on his book. So there are four steps. So first is understand the problem. Second is devising a plan. Third is carrying out the plan. And fourth is looking back. So again, George Puglia identifies uh, four basic principles of problems on his book. First is understand the problem. Second is devising a plan. Third is carrying out a plan. And fourth, last is looking back. Okay, so first step, which is understand the problem. Puglia stages seems apparent that it is often not even mentioned. However, students are often confused in their efforts to solve problems simply because they do not understand it fully or even partially. So, you need to understand first the problem because if you don't know how to understand the problem, there are tendency that your answer is not correct. So, that's why students... um are confused because they do not understand the problem fully or even partially so you should know those unfamiliar words because of if you don't if you don't know what are those words there are tendency that the meaning of it uh, will confuse you so that's why if um a, a certain problem you need to give the uh, you need to understand it fully Kinahanlan kay bao ka unsay gipangutana, unsay gipangita sa problem. Because if you don't know that one, it's hard for you to answer a certain problem. Step 2, devise a plan. So what is devise a plan? Pulia mentioned that there are many reasonable ways to solve problems. The skills at selecting suitable strategy is best to learn by solving numerous problems. Also, consider the following suggestions. Discover the connection between the data and the unknown. So, device a plan. Here, you will, you will use um, different problem-solving strategies. Okay, so you need, to, um, you need to have plans. So, what are you going to use? Is it logical reasoning? Is it guess and check? So, it depends on you what are those um, problem-solving strategies that you will use. That's why you need to um, plan. You need to plan something. And next step is carry out the plan. So, this step is frequently informal than uh, devising a plan. In general, all you need is attention and persistence. Given that you have the necessary skills, persist with a strategy that you have selected. If it remains and not to work, reject it and choose another. Work carefully by checking each step. So here in this the third step, you need to carry out the plan. You need to give the solution. Giyun pagkuha. So that is the third step. It is also informal than devising a plan because um, we have different um, solutions. Different solution, lahi lahi tagways para masolve ang problem. So that's why it's informal. And if your answer is not uh, correct, so you can reject it and then choose another problem solving strategies. Until you get the best problem solving strategy that you need in a certain problem. And be careful in each step because um even it's basic, like sign number. So if you are... If dili ka mag careful, if you will not careful, especially um using sign numbers, there are tendency that your answer is uh, will be wrong. Okay, that's why we need to be careful by checking each step. And third is look back. So Puglia mentioned that much would be added by taking the period to imitate and look back at what you have done, what functioned, and what did not. So, you need to review your answer. You need to review it carefully or just checking. You you will give um, you will give here and you know the, how to check. So, if, the, if, you, if you check and then it's correct, so that's the correct answer. If not, so you can uh, choose another problem-solving strategy. So, again, there are four steps in Puli, George Pulias. Basic principle of problems on his book. First is understand the problem. Second is devising a plan. Third is carrying out a plan. And fourth is looking back. So now, here, 
Uh, here is the example of using a problem using George Pulias uh, basic principles of problem. So, in three bowling games, Alma scored 138, 144, and 141. Or 138, 141, and 144. What score will she need in the fourth game to have an average score of 145 for all four games? So, first you need to do is understand the problem. So, what uh, what is asked in the problem? Unsay gipangutana sa problema. Okay, so, understand the problem. So, Alma scored 138, 141, and 144 in three games. So, the average score of the uh, game is 145 in four um, scores. So, that's why, what should be the fourth score? So, that is understand the problem. Step 2, here devise a plan. You need to create your plan. You need to choose problem-solving strategies. So, we can quickly solve this by algebra. So, using algebra, where let x be the required um, score. So, x means variable. Okay, so it represents a known. So, we can uh, use this algebra to represent x as the fourth um, score in the game. Okay, here, step 3, carry out the plan or the solution. You give the solution. Since the average score is 145, we have 138 plus 141 plus 144 plus x. So, x is a variable. So, solution, 138 plus 145 plus 144 plus x divided by 4 is equals to 145. Because it's average, the four scores are average, the average is 145. That's why we divide it by 4. Next is, uh, add this one, so 138 plus 141 plus 144, the score is 423 plus x, and then do your um, cross multiplication. 4 times 145, so 4 times 145 is 580. So, 423 plus x is equals to 580. Then, transpose that one. If you want to transpose a certain number to the right or to the left, it means that their sign numbers, ang ilang sign mausab. So, 423 and then transpose, it becomes negative 423. So, x is equals to 500 minus 423 and the answer is 157. So, Meaning, 157 is the fourth score of Alma. Okay, so last step is look back or checking or reviewing. So, computing the average score of 138, 141, 144, and 157 yields to or equals to 145. Thus, 157 is the correct answer. So, that is the use of George Polya's basic principles and problem solving. Okay, now, mathematical reasoning. Problems generally present severe, several facts that can be used together to conclude. Combining reasoning skills with other strategies such as drawing a diagram or making table, it will help us to find the desired solution. By using logical reasoning, we can make reasonable estimate. Thereby, eliminating many incorrect possibilities, we use deductive thinking We when we solve a problem by eliminating, eliminating possibility. So, mathematical reasoning is very important to solve a problem. Because um, if we use these problem-solving strategies with mathematical reasoning, there is a big chance that your answer is correct. Or we can find the desired solution. So, there are two types of mathematical reasoning. So, these are first is inductive reasoning. Second is deductive reasoning. Again, there are two types of reasoning. First is inductive reasoning. Second is deductive reasoning. Okay, so first is inductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning is the procedure of accomplishing a general assumption by examining specific instances or from specific assumption to general conclusion. When you example a list of numbers and predict the next number in the list, according to the sum patterns you have observed, you are using inductive reasoning. 
The assumption from using deductive reasoning is called a conjecture since it may or may not be correct. So, inductive reasoning class from specific to general. So, giving example first and then after that one, give the um, general and then conclusion. But then, if the, when we use inductive reasoning, um, we, this we, call, we call it also it is a conjecture since eh, it may not or correct the um, reasoning skills. Okay, so example of inductive reasoning. So first is every, every sports car I have ever seen is red. So meaning, all the sports car that he, uh, he or she um, seen is always red. So that's why he gave a conclusion or she gave the conclusions that thus all sports car are red. Again, um, if we use inductive reasoning, we can say that the answer is conjecture because it is a true or false or may or may not correct. So not all the times inductive reasoning is correct. So second, the coin I drew from the bag is 5 peso coin. Another 5 peso coin is drawn from the bag. A third coin from the bag is again 5 peso coin. Therefore, all of the coins in the bag is again 5 peso coin. So, from first um, draw, he or she um, get, get 5 peso coin. And second draw, 5 peso coin again. Third draw, 5 peso coin. So, that's why he gave a solution he gave a um, conclusion that all of his coin, all of her coins in the bag are all 5 peso coin. But then there are tendency na yun na ay masagol bisag usa ka piso. So that's why we tell that um, inductive reasoning is using conjecture. May or may not correct. So observe that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. 7 plus 18 is uh, 7 plus 11 is equal to 18. So thus the sum of two odd integers is always even. So um, we need to um, here in number um, pattern class we are using inductive reasoning because we are giving example first and finding pattern. So here 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So 1 and 1 is um, odd integers. And then 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. 7 plus 11 is equal to 18. Thus, all of the sum of the two odd integers is always even. Okay, next is inductive, uh, deductive reasoning. So when we say deductive reasoning, it is a type of reasoning where the act of backing up or general statement with specific scenario. Deductive reasoning is the process of concluding by Applying general assumption, procedures, or principles. Deductive reasoning is an elementary form of valid reasoning. Deductive reasoning or deduction starts with universal statement and then go to um, specific conclusion. In mathematics, deductive reasoning make use of definitions, axioms, theorems, and rule, rules, and inference. So, um... In short, deductive reasoning is from general to specific. So, you give the general first and after that specific and then conclusion. So, here's the example. All men are mortal. So, it's all men are mortal meaning it is a general. So, Raymond is a man. Therefore, Raymond is mortal. So, that is the example of deductive reasoning where we give um, general con con assumption first and then specific assumption. If all organisms are made of cells and humans are organism, then humans are made of cells. So, if ang tanan ko ng organisms kay made of cells and then human is also a organism. So, that's why um, we gave the conclusion that humans are made of cells also. So, next is counterexample. When I say counterexample, it is a mathematical statement with an example that satisfies the statement conditions but does not lead to the statement's conclusion. Identifying counterexample <clears throat> is a way to show that a mathematical statement is false. So, giving counterexample, giving example for a certain mathematical statement, 
counterexample means uh, it is a way to show that the statement, mathematical statement is false. Kinahanlan, um, dili siya sakto by giving a uh, example. So here, example for every integer n, n cube is positive. Using counterexample, prove that the statement is false. So you should give a counterexample. If n is equals to 1, so 1 cube is 1 times 1 times 1 is equals to positive 1. So, the statement is correct here. However, if n is equals to negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Times negative 1, the answer is negative 1. Thus, using this example, negative integers, the statement is false. So, for every integer, negative integer, n is cube, is not positive always. So, that's why it's counter example okay here's your evaluation number five and thank you for listening and i hope that you learned something today and god bless us all